My name is Scott Thorpe. I'm with the law firm of Kunzer IP, and today I'm going to be talking about taking a U.S. patent application and converting it or nationalizing it in other countries, particularly China. Now, in China, you have a patent is called a Zhuan Li, and the U.S. U.S. Patent Office has a number of procedures that are commonly used, and the Chinese Patent Office, the Sino Intellectual Property Office, or SIPO, has some similar uh, ways that they deal with patents, but they're not identical. And most people, when they write a, a patent for the United States, don't even think about what happens when that U.S. patent application is converted into a Chinese patent application. But it's absolutely critical because of these differences in the way the USPTO and the SIPO uh, operate. So we're going to talk about things that you need to do and make sure that your patent application has so that when it is nationalized in China, that, it, that the, the whole examination or prosecution process goes smoothly. The biggest difference in between the United States patent system and the system in China is that the Chinese are much more strict about amendments to an application and amendments to the claims being supported by the original application. In the United States, most examiners will allow you to amend a claim to change its meaning if that meaning is found in the original application. In China, they're much more strict. and They often require that amendments to the claims mirror the specification language. So this is a big difference and it often means that applications in China aren't able to be broadened or aren't able to be narrowed in the same way they can be in the United States. And as a result, a lot of people have trouble with their Chinese patent applications. So I'm going to talk about a couple of things that you absolutely must do to make sure that you're your U.S. patent application is ready for China. And the first thing is that you need to be very careful in describing all levels of the patent application or the, or the invention. Most, most inventions are described on a number of different levels. You have a very high level, general level, then a couple of embodiments that are at a more detailed level, and then you finally have additional embodiments that are at a very detailed uh, level. And in the United States, often these, these descriptions of these different levels are mixed. In a Chinese application, you need to make sure that each level is very succinctly and very carefully described with its own set of drawings. And, and with language that refers back to the higher levels. Okay, I'm going to give an example of what I mean by different levels of embodiments for a, an invention. Suppose you had a digital hearing aid. That would be a very high level embodiment of that invention and you would want to claim it very broadly. But the invention might also include the ability to have directionality so that, for example, the hearing aid uh, picks up more sound in front of you than behind you so that you're able to talk with someone in a room and tune out all the background noise. That would be another level of embodiment there. There might be additional elements of that invention that you'd want to claim on a lower level because it's, it's, it's something that is less general than, than simply a digital hearing aid. And you might have another level of different embodiments for directionality that, for example, reduce noise in different ways. So, for example, you might have three different ways that you reduce the noise for a directional digital hearing aid, and you'd want to talk about all three of those embodiments. So, again, all of these are very important to claim in detail on their particular level when you're, when you're converting a U.S. patent application to something like a Chinese patent application. A few other things that you need to do besides carefully structuring the levels of embodiments that you describe are talking or the way you define key terms. Now, usually, your U.S. patent application is going to be translated by someone that is not an engineer. 
and they probably barely understand the underlying principles of the patent application. So you need to make sure that all the terms are very carefully defined for them so that they understand what they're talking about. Because whereas your typical patent application is written for an examiner that is an engineer and is very well familiar with the, the particular area of the art you're talking about, but that's not often true of translators. So define your key terms and keep the sentences simple. It has to be very simple because the, the translator simply is not going to understand this invention as well as they should. And the final thing that you need to think about is making sure that someone that understands the patent application reads it and reviews it. This is so critical because if you just assume that the translator got it right, oftentimes when you're years down the road, when you're actually prosecuting or examining this patent application, you're going to find that the translator didn't do a good job and that things that you needed in that specification aren't there. So this is very important because so much of what you, what you create in terms of intellectual property has to be protected in other countries, particularly a country like China. And because their, their system isn't the same, you need to make sure that your U.S. invention translates well into a Chinese patent application.